Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And one Pedro Mateus joining hey you live. Uh, us live. How does that work? I don't know. It's a mystery to everyone. Um, what's up, everyone? I know, I know we've um, all had busy weeks. I know Pedro was yes. busy <laughs> last night with his... Uh, I, I like how you did it, Ben. Uh, <laughs> You got to start somewhere if you're going to be doing like um, live stuff on Twitch. Was uh, I've been bugging Pedro? I'm like, take apart one of your laptops. You do that all the time. It'll be fun. Not easy though, was it? No, no. Especially if you have to account for speaking into a great big trunking microphone and making sure that things are on shot so that the people watching can see what you're doing. Uh, yeah, that that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't first experience. Uh, if, as I do more, I'll get better at it. <laughs> I I got the no notification. It's like, well, Pedro is doing this thing. You know, I trust Pedro to do stuff on Tuesday. I don't like micromanage anything. I'm like, all right. Oh, he's doing the laptop thing. He's finally going to use his lo lav mic. Oh, <laughs> lavalier <laughs> mic. <laughs> I looked. I didn't look. I didn't even remember the uh, lavalier mic. I did look for the shotgun mic, so I could at least have that, like, pointed in the general direction of where my face would be, and I wouldn't have to worry about this. But uh, I couldn't find it. Oh, so, <laughs> what? Couldn't find it. I don't know where Nori put it. It ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Dory was the one using it, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> that was awesome, man. I'm glad you get an attempt with that, and I'm sure you learned several things. Yes. Like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can change that. Then. What about you, Joe? What's new? What's oh up? boy, just been doing lots of podcasting for Destination Linux, for Linux Gamecast, and uh, lots of social networking. <laughs> Networking for both networks. <laughs> it's keeping me busy. <laughs> that's awesome. I just realized that uh, we were talking in the pre-show and I was like, oh, let's have some tea right before the show. And like, apparently I was cold because now I'm leaking. I'm like, geez. <laughs> Don't you love that? Or dehydrated. One uh, of the two. <laughs> could be. A little column A, little column B. Really the only thing I've, um, mm. it's a busy time in the year for me, day job stuff. But uh, the last, I, I just had this thought because I, I get a notification yesterday or day before like the itunes hasn't updated i dread that because that's <laughs> that's never once has there been something's wrong on my end in the history it's like, oh apple change first thought oh apple changed something i'm sure it doesn't like because it gets uh upset angry hissy at like ssl certs because you know we sit behind cloudflare and i've had to do some stuff with like mirroring rss feeds to make it happy and i finally tracked down exactly what was going with it but every every time i get done with that dealing with like their web interface kudos to you apple for actually having a web interface now so i no longer have use of that one windows tablet in this house but <laughs> their web interface is atrocious and it just uh. randomly logs you out for fun just to keep you on your toes <laughs> 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 that's after it just sits there with a little spinny wheel and you're like are you gonna do it and you don't know i mean it's perfectly safe to assume like i'll just go make some tea and come back and we'll see if it did the thing yeah. and sometimes you come back and it's just back at the login screen i'm like apple oh man <laughs> but while i was in there um I went ahead and updated, uh, if you don't know, on iTunes, we have uh, for Linux Gamecast Weekly, and I'll probably be adding some for this show, we have uh, video versions available, SD and HD, so I made sure those feeds were updated and synced correctly because they they were just like vestiges of like things that were getting updated if you knew where they were at, so they're there. But yes, I, I had the thought, ladies and gentlemen, when I was done with that, it's like, I feel aged every time I have to deal with iTunes. Uh, <laughs> No victory in sight, but we do have some good news that we need to get right into because last week, um, it was last week, right, that the internet lost yes. its collective mind <laughs> yes. when Red Hat was like, yo, you know what? We picked up CentOS about six years ago and we're going to change things. We're, we're going to change the deal. We're going to alter the deal slightly. And um, what, what were they? What is it? Stream? Was that it? Yes. yes. CentOS Stream. Mm -hmm. I want to call it CentOS Next, but I know that's not right. <laughs> and uh, well, mm -hmm. the good news is 
We got this out of it. This is Rocky Linux. It's a community-driven effort to bring you enterprise-grade production-ready Linux. I'm like, what? I don't think I've ever heard about that. Well, this is an upcoming Linux distribution. Like I said, it's currently in development, and it's going to be completely binary compatible using the um, with RHEL, I should say, using the source code. Um, it's going to be community community supported. So that's good. And I'm happy about that. And it's been named after one of the CentOS co-founders, uh, Rocky McGo, which I was kind of surprised mm -hmm. because Cloud Linux also stood up and they're like, hey, we're going to be doing our own thing as well, you guys. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. So we're, we're going to get some initial <laughs> branching from this. I understand. Then I laughed out loud <laughs> because <laughs> Oracle. It's like, hey, we're a great, I like really, I'm not making this up. And there's a link in the show. Go, go look at the show notes. Oracle legitimately put mm -hmm. up a little page and like, come to us. And everyone laughed. But yeah, this is uh, being led by one of the creators of the CentOS project all those years ago. And I, I think this is good. I, I'm happy to see that. And you're going to have options. I don't think. What do we think, though? This is, I tried to have a think about this. And so many times I can say think in one. Um, <laughs> the, with CentOS, um, you're going to be looking, and this is aims to be something that you can switch over to without any friction, without any change. And I, I see a lot of people currently using CentOS and enterprise and production. This is where they're going to be going because it's going to be from a trusted source and as long as the community and team gets behind it. But I, I don't know what we're going to be seeing with um, CentOS Stream. I, I still can't figure out exactly who that's targeted at. It is targeted at uh, Red Hat's own internal use from uh, the look of things. It's basically the midway point between, well, it's not midway point. It's much closer to actual Red Hat than it is to Fedora. But yeah, Fedora is the Wild West and you have CentOS stream that gets updated far more regularly. And then that makes... Uh, Red Hat better because it is a point in between that they can test things in actual production and it carries the CentOS name so a lot of people that aren't aware of what happened will just go oh is that the new version okay I'll just install that I don't and think anybody were... running CentOS and <laughs> any mission critical anything goes oh yeah next <laughs> uh, update why <laughs> there are yeah. plenty of people who do that <laughs> Well, you remember, we actually had talked about this in January because um, there was an article about it that they were moving over to CentOS Stream to to have more of an updated platform for RHEL. So that, that yeah. was something they've been talking about for a while, but it just kind of happened really quickly. <laughs> Come on, though. I mean, if you need a stable, RHEL-compatible alternative. Three reasons yes. to consider Oracle Linux. I mean, can you... All right, first of all, sympathy... <laughs> Sympathy to you, Mr. Sue, for having to write this. Um, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he wrote it or if it was one of the interns and he just put his name on it. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what? Rocky Linux, it's a thing. They got to get Hub page on. Go check it out. Yeah. Play around with it. And uh, I don't know. Maybe by the end of. Did they even do any type of rollout for this? Uh, I mean, it's in the planning stages right now, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what gets up and running and branding. Branding. Mm -hmm. Did anybody else want to do some Rocky Horror Picture Show for that? <laughs> <laughs> Just the lips. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're willing, you could also try Huawei's uh, CentOS based. Enterprise Linux distro called Euler OS, and they have a community edition called Open Euler as well. <laughs> if you you know, take that between uh, uh, Euler OS from Huawei and uh, Oracle Linux from Oracle, uh, uh, no, d literally anything else. <laughs> I, I do believe this is where most people are going to be headed to Rocky Linux yeah. because even to moving to something like, you know, I'm like, use Debian, you fools. But yeah. that, that's a switch. And the same goes for moving over to um, Canonical with the Ubuntu. I mean, it you're having yes. to move things. The one question I had, uh, we were talking about this in the pre pre super shows on last Saturday was um, 
driver manufacturer, you know, people who have hardware. I'm thinking about stuff like Mellanox, you know, fiber cards and uh, capture cards like Blackmagic, you know, and yes, evil binary closed source drivers that you unfortunately will be dealing with at some point. Uh, they tend to target rail stable and mm-hmm. last version of CentOS. So I don't see them like setting like um, Red Hat well, CentOS stream as a target because they like things not to move for a couple of years. Like, Hey, it works on this. And you're like, what about this? They're like, yeah, it works on this. Not that have fun. <laughs> Hi, black magic. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting to sit back and talk about yeah. it, but we did get a new kernel out. Yes, we did. So Linus Torvalds just released Linux kernel 5.10. And it's of course the last big release of the year. And it's the latest long-term support Linux. And uh, it comes with uh, lots of updates and improvements. This is actually a really big one. Uh, One thing is that it does now support, has initial support for RISC-V boot by EFI, which I know a lot of people have been wanting. More support for AMD RDNA 2 Radeon RX 600 GPU graphic cards. Yay! And it also supports the Nintendo Switch, Joy-Cons, and the Pro Controller. <laughs> and yes, Ven, as well as the Guitar Hero <laughs> <laughs> device. <laughs> so, and, and one this of the- This is a critical <laughs> part, Joe. You can't just gloss over this. No. I know. <laughs> no so development funny. infrastructure is complete without a Guitar Hero controller laying around somewhere. No? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, whenever you go into the office, you need to go search for the Guitar Hero because it's there. You it's do, there. Man. Yes. You, listen, you can take out like four or five zombies with one of those before it really lets go. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, one of the biggest, uh, biggest updates is for the EXT4 file format has a major write performance boost from fat fast commit support and it gains optimized file overwrites in DAX and DIO I O D I O modes. E I E I O. Sorry. I went digging around with it, played with it, and um as always, I was over on um our Linux and you know in the comments and I was reading through that and a bunch of people in Arch were like, oh, where's it at? It's not in the repo. And this was like minutes after being released. Like, oh, we might have to wait a day. And that always inspires me. I'm just gonna download it and build it real quick on Debian 10, just to have a good laugh. Uh nothing to report on the audio front. You know, I went through the change log, didn't see anything in there. Now they did add support for the Sound Blaster AE7, but Then again, that would require you owning an AE7. That's your own decision. I'm not going to judge you harshly. (laughs) Better support for the RDNA 2 series from AMD. So that's always good to see. And whatever that thing, you know, Zen that Intel's working on. Z? (laughs) Work continues, Pedro Mateus, on USB 4. (laughs) In just 10 years, we will have... USB. They should just be done with it. Come Amen. on, please. <laughs> uh, the things I did test, uh, it does build with the latest Vulcan Beta driver on NVIDIA. Very good. Mm, no. Nice. And uh, it absolutely collapsed and caught on fire with Black Magic because it's Black Magic. Okay. Uh, but it runs. I mean, I booted on the system and didn't see anything noticeable of note. Nothing died. But then again, there is the point release. So if you were like me and you were doing something like, oh, yes, let's just try. Oh, what happened to my RAID array? My XT4 file yeah. system on it. That's gone. <laughs> Arthur was very quick to point out in the uh, comments in the show notes, like, uh, there's already been a hot fix, and yeah, te- mm-hmm. 5.10.1 is uh, out now, and it does uh, revert a couple of the patches that were introduced to attempt to uh, fix some issues uh, with the um, RAID implementations. It, was, it affected RAID 1, RAID 10, and RAID 6s. Mm-hmm. Rate sixes, you just straight up couldn't mount them. That was how bad it was. So yeah, no, it's uh, if you are going to try and build, pull the uh, five point ten point one instead of the uh, five point ten point zero. Due to those, but yeah, the release notes are actually uh, very interesting. Besides the uh, ext four uh, bit, that there goes my um, 
bit right again. But uh, Jill mentioned the uh, EXT for uh, file system performance improvements. I'm pretty sure it's not going to make much of a difference, but I am very much looking forward to that. And um, extra fixes for Zen 3 and 5000 series Ryzen CPUs. And considering I now have the X570, at some point I may end up getting the... 5800x or the 5900x once they drop below the uh, 400 pound mark because they're not spending more than that on any one piece of hardware just no <laughs> be real amd is gonna have to release something new or intel's gonna have to cut their prices which one's gonna happen first Ooh, at this point that's a bit of a <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, the point i was trying to drive home is you're going to be having that piece uh yeah. cpu for for a minute pedro i i do believe oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> getting to know gnome we have an entire update from the gnome blog about the ongoings between october and november is there anything terribly salacious in it jill Oh, well, besides the new Epiphany logo, which is actually quite pr pretty. <laughs> no, there's er, there's been uh, lots of updates and Gno to Gnome Web and WebKit, and it allows you to play uh, game pads um, in the web browser to the program Geary, to Gnome Games, Fractal, that's another one, and Library SVG. and. Uh, uh, Vin and Pedro are going to talk more in depth about those, but the the addition that I wanted to talk about is called Souk. Uh, <laughs> Souk is an up and coming independent flat pack app store written in GTK4 and Rust, and it is so much easier to use and less clunky um, alternative to GNOME software. Yeah, that's um, not a very high bar. Yeah, that's not a very <laughs> part. It'll, it, it, if, it, it just it being faster will be an improvement. Yeah. And so it just be it's just get nice to have a flat pack alternative to the Ubuntu software and Snap Store under Ubuntu. Again, cool, not a very high bar. That's not, not, not a very high bar. <laughs> and it, it is cool because it's made by Felix Hacker and Christopher Davis. And Felix Hacker is the developer you might know out there. Um, uh, so for some great GTK4 apps, including shortwave radio, internet radio, which is one of my favorite apps, and the Fragments BitTorrent app. And it's just nice to have a modern, simple, GUI approach to a flat pack app store. And it's so needed under GNOME. <laughs> Although I'll still probably be using the flat pack command line. That's the, I just, you are a Linux that. user. So yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. That's why I don't use flat packs either. Ha. Ah. <laughs> well, I, me and Pedro use flat packs to test for, on the show for, for LWW. I can for tell myself software. lies too, Jill. I mean, it's not difficult. <laughs> Check this out. I have out. several flat packs installed for yeah. Bithynia. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Peasants. <laughs> Gnome Games really caught me off guard. I'm like, wait a minute, they're doing a thing with Gnome yes. Games. Oh, yes. Look at that, man. Uh, Dreamcast, too, which sounds like, well, I bet Pedro will at least have something positive to say about <laughs> that. Uh, neutral at best. It's trying to cut in on that Lutris action, but that, yeah, no, that's that's neat. Not I necessarily that. new, but neat. <laughs> and there's going to be a new app for health tracking. I'm like, okay, that's the thing. People are doing that. I don't know about it on their PCs, but hey, it's an option in the known circle. Um, that could be very important. And yes. Because that's going to be, you know, for helping to promote third party apps, games, and stuff like that. And if you uh, sign up with the circle, yeah, that's right. Join the circle, the circle of gnomes. They will provide mm -hmm. promotion and advertising for you. So, um, and contributors. Uh, can get found uh what is it uh membership foundation. gnome foundation membership yeah. yep <laughs> so yeah that's neat all the rust everything's in rust now that's interesting <laughs> that's what the kids are it's, into it's the new ruby it's yeah, fine it is <laughs> i'm used to it um it's good to see I, I like little updates like this and i'm like okay uh -huh. i can't really call actually this that's update, the but the the positive thing here is very much uh, the circle if you are yeah. uh, actively building uh, anything that's focused and aimed at gnome and gtk i'm sorry for you i truly am but uh, if that's the case you should definitely apply for the circle because yeah 
Chances are you're a little too busy trying to make it work with GNOME, and it would be great if someone else did the promotion for you. This so, would have yeah. so much more mm-hmm. impact if you weren't on KDE. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice because this is the alternative. How did you um, manage from, to keep Plasma you know. <laughs> running long enough to say that, baby? Kaywin hasn't crashed in a week. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we joke, we kid. Learned ever since you were kids. Um, now, something we talked about. <laughs> I know I've talked about ad nauseum, so apologies, was Fedora. The, there was discussions. They were like, hey, uh, there was a proposal, I should say. What we're planning on doing with the next version of Fedora is just getting rid of Pulse Audio. We're going to get rid of Jack and all this fun stuff. Everybody's going to be doing the pipe wire dance. 100%. And a lot of people are like, that's insane. That's crazy. They'll never do that. It'll never. It just happened. So. Yep. Yeah, Fedora meeting too. Uh, the big one from this is in Fedora 34. Route all audio to Pipewire. It will be your default sound server thingy. Oh, yes, yeah, technical terms here on weekly, daily Wednesdays. Um, desktop users, you're probably not going to notice anything. Like if your requirements from a sound server is, hey, I can watch my YouTube videos, I can get on, you know, meetings or Skype or Jitsi and that's fine. I can fine. listen to a game and play a YouTube video at video the same time. Play, right. uh, <laughs> hopefully you will not run into any issues, but this is going to be good for weeding out some of the edge cases. Uh, if you're going to be doing any type of um, like nightmare stuff that I'm doing, you're not using Fedora in the first place. However, we do have our own um, test Jordan. So it's going to be yes. kind of interesting to see. <laughs> yeah, I was talking Jordan. to Jordan about this. Yes, yes. They come in six packs. We've only had to use the two. Um, it, it's kind of interesting because he's starting to uh, play around with some stuff because he's got to set up a smaller version of what I have set up. He is exploring, you know, running with Jack and doing some X minus and routing stuff that I'm doing here how that's going to work. And uh, I can understand a little bit of hesitation to walk into it, especially because I I'm not playing with pipe wire until some of the edges get filed off, but really glad to see this because this is going to get a lot of feedback and yeah. Yay. Very <laughs> mm-hmm. happy. And it's nice to see Fedora on track too. Cause they had, uh, we had talked about this that in Fedora 34, they were supposed to re- release the stable version of pipe wire. It looks like they're definitely on track for that. It is. And for those of you going, wait, what, what's pipe wire? I don't get it. It <laughs> hopefully is going to simplify. Yes, I know. Insert XKCD comic. Um, unify all of the standards that we have between ALSA, between Jack, and everything else. And just, it's going to have modules to be compatible with all that. And so if somebody's like, hey, I want to use Pulse Audio, pipe wire is like, yo, I got it. But also, I need to talk to something over here. I got that. That's ALSA. That's fine. Kind of like core audio. You just plug it in. It's going to work. That's the dream. That's the future I want to see for Linux. I'm very happy for it and the continued development. But yes, good news for that's everyone. That's very good timing, too. <laughs> if you do mm-hmm. things like we do on that stream to the Twitch or to the YouTubes or the mix, I'm just kidding. That's dead. Good job, Microsoft. Um, You might use OBS, Open Broadcaster Studio. It's been available for Linux for quite some time, and there's a new version out, 26.0. One couple of big Linux things in this, and the one you might notice right here if you're watching the video version, virtual camera output on Linux. Now, yes, it requires V4L to loop back. That's the thing, but it should work. Also, BSD users, you're not safe. I want to see some streams from you. (laughs) OpenBSD support (laughs) has been added. HLS support for the YouTube, you want to play around with that. Twitch VOD support which is kind of interesting because they're going to allow you to send a primary and secondary track to Twitch, which is kind of interesting because you can have all of your music and stuff on one track and you can have just your voice on the second. So if you ever have to go back and nuke the audio, there you go. It's not going to mess up your voice. Smart. I like Mm -hmm. seeing stuff like that. And uh, they did add the ability to ingest captions with deck link cards. So if you're trying to feed like live captioning with the information in the HDMI or SDI signal, that's there. But um, I'm going to talk about this more in a minute. You might notice if you're on um, Linux or PC that none of your Blackmagic hardware is working correctly if you're trying to capture from another PC. Uh, 
I might have reported that bug earlier, but I'll explain to you why it probably <laughs> didn't get fixed. Julie had a couple of thoughts on this, though. Yeah, so this is actually something that's happened to me. I've accidentally opened OBS, <laughs> I had it open several times, and, and couldn't figure out why my recordings were sluggish. So now what's awesome is on Linux, OBS will now detect other instances that are currently running of OBS and warn the user running more than one copy at a time. So if you've all <laughs> accidentally double-clicked that icon too many times it, um, and launched several in instances, you, you will be informed now on Linux. <laughs> awesome. That's pretty okay. cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have actually done it a few times. <laughs> I've had to fight it because there have been times when I've just wanted to be lazy and I didn't want to like set something up. I'm like, I, I need to record OBS because I'm mm -hmm. doing a guy to know me. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to use OBS to record OBS. I don't care. It's good <laughs> enough. Um, and I normally run into it. If you have um, OBS web sockets installed, It'll be like, mm. hey, 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 what are you trying to pull off? Huh? I see you already have one copy. I, I don't, I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you could always uh, get through that. That's good to see. Overall, overall is an interesting release. I would uh, avoid it like the plague for the time being, but it is there. This next thing Pedro is going to talk about, but I'll give you a little <laughs> bit of a backstory. Billions of years ago in the future's past, uh, I had a problem with Jack. This is about two years ago. Um, I decided that I'm going to move everything over on this box to Jack. And of course, you know, I have Jack working with everything else, audio recording, routing, everything else. And the few places I needed it, I would use a Pulse Audio module, Jack Bridge, but everything else is running Jack. And for need, normally for desktop stuff, just use Pulse Audio Kids. And I'd wired everything into OBS and got it all set up and I'm like, Hey, everything's working. And we were streaming and the audio was going out and everything. The sync was off. I was fighting that sync constantly. I'm like, why is the timestamps not ever matching up on the videos? But you know what? I was determined I was going to find a way around it until I checked the recording, which consisted of five audio tracks with nothing on it. Oof. <laughs> which I filed a bug report. I'm like, ah, oh, well, uh, th this seems like it's a little bit of a bug. Wasn't the first one to file this report, Pedro. No. In mm. fact, about a year prior to you, um, <laughs> someone else had already reported that. And uh, the latest one was actually uh, Mr. Markin, or Merkan, Merkan, something like that. Mr. Mark. Uh, whatever he... Um, well, uh, he decided, you know what, let's just get down and fix it, because he submitted that bug report. It was insta-closed, like Venn's one and all of the other ones relating to this. And uh, it was assumed the, the uh, OBS developers said, no, that is an issue on your end, so you go and um, try and fix that. Now, to give you a little and feedback, he... a little back and forth with this, Pedro, is um, to give a full picture to this. I when I say two years, every time this bug opens up, um, this is just a known bug. Anybody who's ever dealt with Jack in any serious manner with a properly configured box and the hardware to do it has run into this bug. It's known. Apparently, it's a huge, well-known bug in the DJ streaming community in Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure uh, Markan has dealt with them because he yeah. had a lot of knowledge to dump on well, the thread. Uh, also, he lives in Tokyo, so yes, uh, yeah. he's one of the <laughs> his one of his hobbies is streaming as a DJ. But to your point, I've every, every time I get in there, I I've, I've genuinely gotten to the up until this. Even in that current thread, I said, "Don't waste your time." They're just going to close it and say maximum audio buffer size reached and that's gone. And I threw out, you know, a bit of a dog whistle command in that last one just because I needed to check something. I was like, I can't reproduce this. And uh, the person keeping the buck closed did not have a system configured correctly for the real-time hardware. And feel free to go back and read in this actual bug report thread admits that he doesn't have the hardware in order to reproduce it. But something's wrong on our end <laughs> no no it's a problem with your end you can see it right there on the log you see that a lot uh, and of course Markan is like 
you know what, I'll just do it myself. And he did. He made a few commits, then he had to take one of them back because uh, the timestamps weren't updating properly. But that now has been uh, sorted out too. All of the commits are there. Uh, they will at some point eventually be um, introduced uh, or already have been the uh, in the uh, OBS bits. The... We went back and fixed Pulse Audio stuff, too, because... Yes, which yeah. is very good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the developers, uh, the original thread that he logged that got Insta-closed, it kind of kept going. It and turned into a slap fight, going. be honest. <laughs> it, it did. It was a slap fight between Murkan and the Fifi Brigade. It's like, oh, that's not the way you get people to do what you want them to do. It's just... Fixed your thing. What else do you want? If he's gone through the trouble after you ignored uh, his issue, after you insta-closed him, after you went to Discord like you told him to, and you uh, once again completely ignored and refused to acknowledge the issue, he still went out of his way to fix the issue. That's why he's berating you. He wants you to be better. If he didn't care... He wouldn't have. <laughs> I think things got heated. And I will say on his behalf is one of the replies was, well, there's no evidence you actually fixed anything. I could point out the fallacy with that. Well, but, uh, I, I, like I said, I understand why he got heated about, I fixed a thing you can't even comprehend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get that, man. Um, here's all I'll say to this. Uh, is, you know, pull requests don't get Linux pull requests and bug reports don't get a lot of attention with OBS. I've said it in the past. I'm not I'm just saying this is just reality, positive, negative, however you want to look at it. You know, you can look at uh like the save device by path. I think it's 34-37. And I think WinPress, uh Martin, you know him. Um, is one in there and that's going to fix like if you have multiple usb devices like webcams or uh capture cards plugged in where they don't constantly get scrambled and, that, and mm -hmm. the fix for that is there it works it's been there since september just sitting there um the deck link pedro you were in discord when um I was like, <laughs> really because i noticed and this is like rc1 of this latest release i'm like yo this this breaks when you try to compile obs so like, hey, uh, it's me. If you've ever read my bug reports, they're just dry because it's me. I'm like, here, there's this, here's your logs, you know, and this is why it's breaking. That was insta-closed. I mean, it's just closed. You're building OBS wrong to um, <laughs> say that to me. Okay, fine. We're, um, but you know what? Apparently, I must have built it incorrectly. I was told to go to dis Discord for support like uh macron ones and you know and i showed up there and i'm like so uh could anyone point me and it's kind of fun me going to discord because i spend time in the linux channel on the obs discord helping doing support when i you know somebody hits a question that's in kind of the weed stuff but you know i asked if there was an updated build instructions but yeah it was just closed zero now fortunately later in that day to the credit somebody actually investigated the closed bug mm -hmm. uh report reopened it fixed it and like hey we fixed the thing now the current issue with uh 26 one that i was talking about if you have deck link hardware and you're trying to if i was trying to capture these two pcs uh you just get like this jacked up green out formatted uh screen that affects Windows. like half the yeah. screen <laughs> i posted about it and uh one of the uh obs guys get yeah, two of them didn't get back in touch we're like hey we're aware of and i'm like yeah i submitted that bug report for you guys released it but um you know a day before i'd known about that like a week before but to be honest i didn't feel like defending my thesis for lack of a better way of explaining that uphill battle um and so i didn't but i finally said hey man i should at least let everyone know and file the bug report and which i did and I had Linux in the title, so maybe I'm like, eh, it's not going to affect Windows or Mac. We don't have to worry about it. They shipped it. Turns out it affected Windows. And um, whoops. But hey, man, at the end of the day, I always say this, man, because I want to thank everybody in the OBS team for doing the work they do, because I genuinely mean that. Oh. It's a thankless job. 100% it is. Your efforts are appreciated. 
But I will say this. I will say this. The community engagement involvement, it does need some work. It genuinely does. But hey, that's really all I want to say about that. If you do have OBS questions, go to the OBS Discord, go to the Linux channel. I might be able to help you out or some of the other beautiful people in there will as well. Mm. I think that's fair. Yes. Yeah. No, it is absolutely a thankless job, and I do get that they probably don't want to be berated on a constant basis, but in this occasion, eh, that one developer kind of earned it. <laughs> Chroma. <laughs> wait, hang on. Chrome? Chrome? Oh, wait, hang Previously, on. Chromify. Chrome, Chromify? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to call it Chromify. Yeah, that that <laughs> works. Uh, the previously uh, Chrome fee, it's now uh, actually called Project Cross Hole, and uh, what it does is it takes the image, the ISO of a Chromium OS, and it introduces. Uh, you also download the um, recovery images and a couple of other things for actual Chromebooks, and it pulls the uh, Android app integration and the rest of the Google stuff from uh, Chrome OS and dumps that into Chromium OS. Why would you need to do that? Well, let's say you want to install Chromium OS with Android app support on That's literally of any other laptop. Major. Okay, hang on. What? Yes, there are a lot of instructions. <laughs> Instruction number one, automated script. Oh. <laughs> There's the installation methods are actually linked on the, um, they're there on the, uh, the GitHub readme. Okay. And yeah, chances are you have a laptop that's more powerful than 99% of the Chromebooks out there right now. Because you do. Even if it is an older laptop, it's probably more powerful. It has a much better GPU. Uh, and you'd like to maybe get Chrome OS running on that with the Android app support. There you go. That is a script. You just They tell you exactly what you need to download and why you need to download it. So in that respect, perfect. And uh, yeah, it might actually ma make for a fun stream. I just have to... Get one of the laptops with an actual HDMI out to use the uh, EVGA capture card and actually go through the whole process on stream. That might be interesting. An idea anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I just like that you want to actively inflict Chrome OS onto a perfectly working laptop. Aww. I like that. It's dark. <laughs> Android app support. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this is also really good for those older Chromebooks that are no longer receiving official Chrome OS updates. And I have quite a few of them in my collection. I have the Acer C720s. I've got several of those. Some One of the best Chromebooks ever made that isn't getting any updates anymore. So this would be for perfect for that. That's a very good <laughs> use too. Yep. <laughs> I, I could forgive the first like um, Google product of like, you know what? I'm going to buy this <laughs> half a grand Nexus 10 tablet because that's their flagship product. They'll never drop. <laughs> well, we drop support for it then. We're Google. Get used to it. Yeah. At least uh, they stuck around with that for what three years. You know, long term yeah, support. That's at about Google. three that, years yeah, longer uh, than that. That, yeah. that. that definitely should be considered long term support. And, yeah. uh, that that's a neat project. For me, that would be. Let's play around with it. Let's see what we can do mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It it is again uh, from my use case. I have the uh, Acer Chromebook, which does the uh, two in one thing. You can flip the screen and use it as a tablet. Mm -hmm. But if you want to actually play an Android game or anything on it, it that Celeron is just not good enough. It's a thirty sixty, I think Celeron, mm -hmm. and it's it's not good enough for the gaming experience. But I do have a laptop with one of the first generation Iris, so <laughs> I might be trying it on that. <laughs> on yeah, behalf that of a great. large <laughs> percentage of people who might be considering doing this, I'm going to ask you a very, very legitimate question. Can I watch the Netflix? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. There's, uh, you'll have to get the uh, same uh, sort of workaround that you do on Android if you've rooted your device. But once you have Android apps working, mm -hmm. that's easy enough to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And there you go. Or, if you have any problems with Netflix, uh, <laughs> Pedro. XDA developers forums. 
<laughs> we were talking about that before the show, the, the adventure that is um, oh, yeah. prying information out of the XDA forms. It's a great resource. And I made the joke of like, oh, yes, oh, yes. You know, the link's right there at the top of the, you know, on the first page, first post. And like, oh, no, 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 no. You see on page 11, three quarters of the way down, there's <laughs> there's a note that says this is a li- new link. And here is the word that's highlighted mm-hmm. with a new link. This is the new link. I couldn't be bothered to go back to the original post and update it anybody who's played around (laughs) or like going yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, i found i actually found the link to the project croissant um github page on xda developers they'd written an article on how you could install proper chrome os with android app support on uh, other laptops and pcs and yeah, you can, uh, once you have this installed, you can enable both the Android app support and the Linux app support, mm. which since you're effectively already running on, you know, not a Chromebook, not a Chromebook. Yeah. the performance will be so much better. Oh, awesome. Right. Yes. Um, <laughs> on the topic of support, if you want to support us, you can become one of our beautiful party patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's how we do all the nightmare fuel that we bring you five days a week. Four days a week. Five days. Five. Five. <laughs> there we go. That many Tuesday, days week, yeah. Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 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 Saturday. And Saturday. <laughs> we take we take off Sunday and Monday, and uh, sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> ish. It, it depends on what happens. But um, doing that, you get access to some bonus content that we threw in there for helping us out, and uh, that's really the best way to support the show. If you like what you see, keep doing more of it, and uh, name in the credits. Come hang out on our Discord. All the fun stuff. We got Amazon like wish list and stuff like that. Head over to linuxemcast.com for the full rundown under that cleverly disguised support button. But it is there if you want to kick us some shackles. That'd be brilliant. If not, hey man, that's cool. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um I think that's it for the oh, we got merch. You can buy stuff like stickers. Look at that. There's a sticker. Ah, <laughs> I need to buy another <laughs> sticker. Well, okay, I need to buy another one of these because that's one I kind of peeled that one off and used it when we got <laughs> shirt. Yeah. So uh thanks everyone. Thank you. Uh I Yay. didn't do a slice of pie image and I'm not gonna cut it in. So just pretend oh. just pretend Pedro Pedro is a piece of pie. <laughs> Here, I'll hold the raspberry <laughs> pie. There. There we raspberry go. Raspberry pie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, this uh, this is actually something a little bit different. Uh, the Some of you may already be familiar with the IQ Audio Raspberry Pi hats. Never heard of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> there are uh, hats that provide uh, extra... Um, audio outputs or an extra amp uh, with some audio outputs uh, for the Raspberry Pi 3, 4, and the 0. Uh, these new ones, of course, are compatible with the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. Maybe even the Pi 400, although you, you'd probably have a bit of a tough time getting the GPIO <laughs> pins to plug into the back of the uh, the Pi 400. But yeah, you have multiple form factors with multiple different uses. The Pi Zero one is really interesting. And I, I looked at it, it's like, oh, that would actually make for a very compact if you're just looking for an audio interface and drive it off of a Raspberry Pi Zero. That, that's about the same size. That's about all you need. That could be very cool. Not available yet. Uh, the other two, you can, uh, they will be available very soon if they're not already by the time you're watching this, but the uh, Zero DAC will only ship in 2021. So, yeah, that's a teeny tiny little issue. <laughs> I think that's pretty neat, man. You got the DAC Plus, DAC Pro, DigiAmp, and this is all from IQ Auto. You've heard of them before, you know, uh, maybe if you follow this stuff. I've definitely like looked into it and like, can we do it have a recording and stuff like that? Um, this is that's now in the official supply chain. So this is something yep. you're going to be able to get from their authorized resellers. That's good. And they say like the Codex Zero stuff, I mean, it's going to be shipping early in the new year. So you got to wait around a minute for that. But here's what I wanted to say, because, you know, like the Pi HQ camera, you know, the 12 megapixel and the Sony stuff, set your expectations accordingly. Okay. I'm not saying it's <laughs> infinitely better than your, um, you know, little USB dongles and stuff like that, because it will be, but this isn't going to be the mind 
melting earth shattering hi-fi experience of like oh this is great i mean it's gonna be uh, yeah. very very good <laughs> um i just wanted to say that i would like to see something from um iq audio like ada xlr balanced quarter inch input options to explore being able to build a pi powered recording interface like midi and stuff mm. like that but hey it's 30 bucks Buy one, play with it. Or yeah. 20 if you don't want the big fancy version. Gotta have the, <laughs> tell, tell me more about those green plugs, Pedro. <laughs> the ones I have no idea what they do? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, you know, the first time the Raspberry Pi Foundation have brought 30 party, party products into their lineup. So this is a, a big deal and a big change. And, you know, the IQ audio products have been heavily used for in-store audio streaming. Uh, so this acquisition definitely makes sense for them. And I was actually really impressed that the IQ Audio DigiAmp Plus has actually 35 watts per channel uh, to drive a pair of speakers. So that that's actually really impressive for a, a little Pi device. <laughs> yep. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting options. The SNR is about 129 dB on these. I mean, they, they're very usable mm -hmm. for what they are. And I think it would be very interesting to make one that, you know, a Pi powered off a of Ion pack, just so you have DC power, you know, if you were in situations where you had like bad grounding situations or anything like that, I'm like, hmm, I'd be mm. curious. So let's see some input options maybe in the future. Looking forward yeah. to that. Pedro, how can people tell us about their input options? Well, Jordan has the, uh, he is the one who handles the relationship advice, but uh, if you'd like to get in touch with him and tell uh, Jordan about your um, input devices, you can absolutely do that. Just go to lazygamecast.com and um, click the contact button. It's easy enough. The form shows up uh, down below. There's a few disclaimers that you may want to read. Uh, if any of those matter no, to Pedro, you. Uh, I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> or you can skip it like everyone else just go down and make sure you pick lwdw as the show for this specific segment of feedback otherwise well we may misinterpret it as some hate mail for the saturday show or as some relationship advice for jordan well at least which i'm sure it. he would be happy <laughs> that will get sent to us it's not a third party that's all of that's on our server to avoid using yep. some other stuff I and mean, that's all taken care of there we will see it it will get directed to whoever it's aimed at if it's not feedback just pick the right you know other stuff like that it's yep. infinitely better chances of screaming into the ether of like an at reply guaranteed someone will read it if you use that form that's what i'm that's... saying like but i at reply to you on twitter four days ago Finn. like i have 70 <laughs> notifications every morning in the four hours i go to sleep so i might have missed it sorry um <laughs> It happens, and I forget a lot too. That's why I'm, I'll tell people real quick: like, send me an email because I won't forget that. Um, fine. Somebody used the form. Dak did. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> Who's gonna read that? Go on, Jill. I, I I'll, I'll take it. So, dude, playing music in your car is a lot more stable from the phone itself instead of relying on spotty cell coverage in cities. Not to mention, cell data is way more expensive for stuff that doesn't change that often. Brought, brought to us by our friend Dick Kresny, and he's referring to the discussion we had about the G Music browser uh, that that has returned and from the dead. Local music, yes. <laughs> local music playing from your devices, which I do because I have thousands and thousands of uh, records and CDs and tapes, <laughs> and some of it's not available on the internet. <laughs> That's why you put it on the internet. Yeah. Yes. You go there to archive.org and you go, look, I have this CV that's literally nowhere. Take yeah. it. <laughs> so we were talking about that and, you know, driving around cities. And again, if you could worry about your mobile data, I guess that's a legitimate concern if you got to have that music on the car. It's, it's just a shame that, see, lads, I believe we could stand to make a lot of money here. <laughs> I think if we could come up with a way to put a music device inside of the automobiles, I might be onto something. Hmm. <laughs> I, I will call Let's it a radio. 
How about an eight track player, Ben? <laughs> Those are very expensive, Joe. I was looking one for my 78 Dodge Magnum. So, um, <laughs> yes, I know you <laughs> um, what if you want to listen to specific songs and not whatever shows up on the radio? Can't always get what you want, baby. Don't you listen yeah, to but the But you can. <laughs> if you have, say, 32 gigabyte uh, SD card on your phone with a local music library, you can. See, here's the thing, Pedro. You're like 32 gigs. Me and you're like, that's fine. The type of people that are deep into this just laughed at you and they're like, what? Yeah. 32 for what? I got Nori a 128 gig SS, uh, SD card for her phone that that's already almost full up <laughs> yeah I, I was about to say that that just takes care of like the gen one first phase ones they're like there's still other yeah. ones are like 128 what? <laughs> what are you supposed to do with that I just look at it there's no point in wasting my time um yeah i i would always have to do the cost benefit analysis because i always for me i just stream everything and if i need something that i know is going to be data heavy you know Wi-Fi puck or if I use one of my mobile pucks or whatever I'm doing there. Now, when it comes to the car, it's like, oh, pasha with my 10-year-old Turbo Jetta. I want to listen to music. I reach over and I boop the satellite button. I'm like, do the thing. Dance, because it dances on the screen before it cuts on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, you could just get one of your one of your bring one of your tablets in the car and put an FM transmitter on it, like I have, and then use your car radio to listen to your local music. Jill, I only listen to music from outer space when I'm driving. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's the kind of music I listen to. Ambient uh, space. No, no, space this rock comes from space. <laughs> <laughs> See the <does>. difference. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. We're over our time, but uh, we'll see you next week. I'm going to roll some credits right after I pull up a little bit of music. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Space music. And, uh, I wanted to mention, uh, thank you, Computer Kid. He put Old Man Ben had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> it said E-I-E-O earlier. And he, he did the first part of it. <laughs> Matthew, funny. I think you meant to type that you'll be doing some space ambient live shows. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Well, want to thank awesome, Matthew. I'm looking right forward now. to that. Aw, look at all our Y'all beautiful are patrons. Awesome. <laughs> we love you all. Space ambient's <laughs> probably a band. Oh yeah. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>